Who are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Style Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. You like music, you like weed, well we gonna be good friends indeed. This is how much I like more than smoking trees. They'll make you dance the do si do and teach you how to achieve a grow. Smoke a bowl on the 420 Radio Show. On Lifestyle Radio. How's everybody singing? Wah, 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 wah. Sing. We're singing. I, love, I love that intro song. Me too. That's actually uh, um, the Royal Kush Band. Yeah. Yeah, they did that for me a long time ago. Uh, hey guys, I need a theme song, so I'm going to have a contest, and nobody else sent anything other than the Royal Kush Band, so I just kept using it. Day one. Yeah. <laughs> that was, you know, maybe five, six years ago, so. Cool. Um, so, welcome to the 420 Radio Show to our new listeners and to our old ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was... Hey, we love our old new listeners as much That's as we love our new listeners. That's why they'll get that. Uh, I don't fart at them. Tonight we, <laughs> tonight, we are going to spend our show chatting with a man uh, who people lov- lovingly know as Dr. K, Dr. Rob Cameraman. Now, I'm just going to ask you right off the bat, can we even call you doctor anymore, Rob? Uh, can, can you? Yeah. <laughs> sure you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, just because I don't have a license doesn't mean I'm not a doctor. That's right, and that's why I asked you this question. Um, For those who know who Rob is, uh, or Dr. K, which would you rather be called? Oh, either either one's fine. Okay. So (laughs) we'll we'll stick with Dr. K, because that's what everybody knows you as. Um, uh, If you wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourself and uh, what we're going to do tonight here, my computer s- keeps slipping off its pedestal. I'm hoping I'm not, I'm not going to crash. But what we're going to do tonight is we are going to set some rumors to rest. Uh, there's been a lot going on for, what, it's going on five years now, right? That's correct. Yeah, well, it'll be five years in January. Okay. Now, Rob has uh, agreed to talk openly and candidly with us. We're, we've got some questions uh, we'll be taking questions in our chat room if you want to come into lifestyleradio.net or 420radio.ca. Um, you, and the guys are in there. Um, introduce yourself, if you wouldn't mind. Give us a little bit of history, and then we're going to take a quick break and come back, and we'll start talking. Uh, where where would you like me to start? Uh, I, I, I was... 38 years old when, uh, and I worked as a carpenter and, you know, and then uh, I had this notion that I wanted to go to medical school. I would worked with herbal medicine and homeopathic medicine, but I really thought going to medical school, I would be able to reach more people. Yeah. So I had never finished high school, so I had that challenge. First, I had to finish high school. Then... Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but you needed a degree to apply to medical school. So, so then I had to get a degree, and I got a degree in in anthropology, uh, pharmacology, and biochemistry. And then I applied to medical school. So I went to medical school in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is a, a pretty uh, upfront school. It's a lot like McMaster, where it's uh, problem-based learning, so you get early exposure to patients. Uh, After medical school, I did residency in Sudbury, Ontario. So uh, the end result was that I was licensed in both New Mexico and in Ontario. And basically, I've worked in New Mexico and Ontario for the last 24 years. 22 years, I guess. Uh, mostly, I guess I would say 60% was in the emergency department and 40% was family practice. Uh, I've been in uh, Coe Hill since 2008, although prior to uh, going to medical school, I lived in the 
not very far from Cohill, about seven miles away, so I'm familiar with the, the community. Basically, we set up the office here because it's, it's an underserved area, and uh, that was my goal in medical school, to work in a place where, you know, few doctors wanted to go and where there's a lot of needy people, so I'd have, I'd be in a place where I was happy, you know, doing what I wanted to do. So that's why we came to Cohill. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, you're a big part of that community. I mean, <coughs> a lot of support for you in that community, I believe. Was it or not? Yes. Yes, there is. Yes. You know it. Yeah. Except from the police, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I, so, Dr. K, you, you married a Canadian, is that right? I, I did. I married a Canadian. To marry yeah. from where, the how how did you guys experience. meet? Like, where, where did you meet and how did you end up? You know, coming up here. Well, we we met in Hamilton, in Ontario, and uh, so. But I, and when we met, I already had property up here, uh, close to Cohill. So when uh, Mary and I met, we we basically traveled to the U.S. and we lived there for two or three years. Then we came up to uh, around Cohill here, and we started raising a family. We had eventually had five children. We had three, two children and I started going to school and we had three more children. So by the time I was finished medical school, we had five children. <laughs> so obviously Mary had a big input in there because you know, we had to attend to the children while they're growing up and things. So we were both pretty busy. Although while I went to medical school and before, uh, in between, there was a couple of years where I stayed home and Mary got her nursing degree. So when I was finished medical school, Mary was also finished her nursing degree. And basically she ended up running the, the clinic for you pretty much, didn't she? That, that's correct, yeah. She, she was a nurse here at the clinic, you know, and uh, I often worked away in the emergency department because the, the clinic on its own probably was a, a non-profit venture. But uh, with my work in the emergency department, I was able to keep it open and keep it running. So can you can you tell me how is uh, how an emergency family doctor goes from that to being uh, the most signed doctor for the MMAR program in Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, kind of interesting. I mean, uh, I think it was, uh, well, actually I worked in, in, uh, in the Bancroft area in 98 to 2000, and that's when uh, a doctor could actually make an application for a patient to use uh, medical marijuana. And uh, there was no uh, B forms or anything. As I recall, it was just you send a note to Health Canada, and then the patient was able to access medical marijuana. Much, much like we found out they're just going to do now. Well, that no, well, that was yeah, the they, they, this 50, was even 50. before the MMAR program. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, I get you. The, the yeah, what they're going to do exemption. now is is basically repeat the MMAR program. Yeah. Much. <laughs> but in any yeah, case, I, I think I signed up two people during the time I was here. You know. Uh, they were both people that had significant health issues and seizures was one of them and you know there was a lot of documentation that uh, cannabis helped with the seizure activity and of course there's a lot more information now and the fact is that it does help with seizure activity so you know those people have used cannabis since that time and they've been seizure free for now almost 20 years well, I, I know that that um, about seven years, maybe eight years ago now, I yeah. sat in your waiting room, uh, right, like right. many other Canadians were doing, and you were the only place to go. I drove with my mom and another friend from Owen Sound 
to right. to Coe Hill to see you. Uh, we stayed right. in Brancroft. We came down early in the morning, and there were a lot of very sick people waiting to see you. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah, that that the deluge kind of started in 2009 to 2010. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first few people that brought me a B form, I kind of looked at it and said, well, this is different, you know. Uh, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, how, uh, that. That first time somebody said, yes. I'd like to mess, uh, to medicate with cannabis, what do you think, yes. doctor? Uh, well, the first time I thought, well, huh, that's uh, interesting. I mean, I'd always been into herbs and plants, and I was I was aware of the potential healing properties of plants, you know. Uh, so, I, I mean, it wasn't all that surprising that cannabis was helpful, but... You know, when I read more about it uh, in the normal pages and things, I said, "Whoa, oh, this is incredible!" You know, this, <laughs> it's really beneficial for a lot of things. You know, M- mind you, it, it it's been studied a lot. You know, so if we studied some other plants, maybe if we studied chamomile a lot, we could find there's a lot more healing potential there than than there already is. You know, so but anyway, so it, it was it was a good thing. And so, you had you no know, you had no problems you know, with it at first. No, but no, never no trepidations or anything. I had no issues with it. I mean, no, it was, okay. I mean, there was no reason to think that that this could possibly be something wrong. You know. Yeah, but yet, I mean, I, but yet, all the other doctors in Canada were going, "Oh, look at that fool! He's signing for cannabis." You know. Yeah, I I, I don't understand that because you know, on the face of it. Yeah. We all know, everybody knows that it's helpful with pain management. That's right. You know, and and God knows how many people are addicted to narcotics and opiates and things like that. And and here's a, a product or a, a, a natural product that doesn't hurt you. You know, you, you're not going to die from it. And it helps to decrease your need for opiates. Every year, more than 20,000 people die from the use of opiates, you know, and mm. here's, here's a, a, a natural product that you can use and, you know, keeps you in a safer place because you're not using so many narcotics. There's actually been studies done in the U.S. that show that in areas where um, medical marijuana or cannabis is accepted, that death rate from opiates goes down by 25%. So just by letting uh, marijuana or cannabis be out there, we would save 5,000 lives a year. It's and and it, it, this realization came pretty quick, you know, when I, when I started signing. You, uh, when you started signing, it was, it, you were signing to help people. But then, oh, right. but right. then right. it took on a mountain of its own when other people got involved, right? Uh, how, how do you mean? Well, there were slews of other people bringing people to your clinics. Oh uh, yeah, well, there when, was, you know, when when that began, you know, like there there would be somebody that come and they would say, "Oh, I've got ten people. Can I bring a bus load?" I said, no, you can't. Mm-hmm. You know, my services are not brokered. You know, if, if you give them my phone number, they call and make an appointment of their own. Yeah. You know, if 10 people come on the same bus, well, I don't care. You know, they they have to make an appointment of their own. You know? So, that I mean, that was the policy there. People still tried, but, you know, I, I did tell all of them, you know, everybody has to make their own appointment, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, did you guys have any other questions on on the subjects that we've been talking about? I I would like to um, have one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand is with the MMAR program, the forms that you actually signed yeah. were not really a prescription. They weren't a recommendation. They weren't anything. If you read the actual content of the form and yeah. uh, um, can you maybe expand on that so that people understand that? Well, you, you're absolutely right. What you say, it's, it's not a prescription, it's not an authorization, and it's not analogous to a prescription. Uh, what the, the B form 
is only one aspect of the application process. You know, like there's the A part that the, the patient or the applicant fills out, there's the B part, and then there's many other parts, you know, depending on whether you grow your own or somebody else grows it. So the B part is, consists of two declarations. One is a declaration by the applicant that says, I know what the risks are, and it all, and he also, or she also declares that what, whatever they say on that application is honest and truthful. So, so that's the applicant's part of it. The physician part, he just declares that this is what the patient told him. The patient told him that he has, let's say, arthritis and the patient chooses to use 20 grams per day. Well, that, that's all that has to go on there. That's the only interaction that needs to go on there for the, for the physician to do his due diligence. So, you know, when the patient says, I've got this problem, the patient says, I use a certain amount of cannabis, and if the doctor agrees with that or he sees no problem with that, then he signs the declaration. And, and, and it is just that, a declaration. There's, you know, the, the whole process in the end of acquiring cannabis is all patient-centered. I mean, the patient gets the application, you know, the patient fills out the application, he does his declaration on the B part, the physician does his declaration, and then the applicant sends it into Health Canada. Health Canada decides whether or not the the applicant is eligible for or is authorized to possess cannabis. So it, it, none of that process is in the hands of the physician. Right, that's one of the points. I, I guess that very clearly um, clarifies the point that I wanted to make, that it was never a recommendation or a prescription or the physician going, oh, I fully believe that this is going to make a difference. It was none of that ever. No. No. Actually, the way it no, was. And there's the actually was, legislation in Colorado where there was physicians that were uh, charged with the same same things that I'm charged with forgery, fraud. Uh, we've actually had we've actually and, had Dr. David Allen on who is going through the similar thing, isn't he, Lori? Or Lori? Very Kim? similar, and yeah. his is in California, actually. Yeah. Okay, California. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know, but but they determined there that, uh, you know, they, it, it is not in the hands of the physician. I mean, the physician has really nothing to do with how much cannabis the, the patient acquires or is authorized to possess. It's all in the hands of the, the applicant or the patient, you know. So, uh, really, I mean, when, when you look at it, when, what I did, there was no violation of the MMAR. There was no violation of the Medicine Act. There was no criminal. There was no criminal activity, you know. But so, did you ever? Did you ever get a call from Health Canada ever? Uh, I did. I yes, I, I got health uh, calls from Health Canada, and uh, there was some that uh, said they used more than twenty grams. So uh, they said, uh, "Do you think this is legitimate?" You know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, as I recall. The patients had legitimate reasons, you know. They they either used it as a cream, or they they uh, used it in baked goods or butter, or but it was it was legitimate in my eyes, you know. Not that 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 we as a physician legitimize it, because still the application all that's required is that the applicant tells you how much he or she intends to use. But having said that. For my own protection, or for our own protection, we asked people that uh, used more than 20 grams per day to sign an affidavit to that effect. So that that was kind of protecting us, you know. It, it did, not, not, that, not that it was required legally, but it, we just did that. Were they watching over you pretty carefully? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, do I do I understand that they whatever um, charges and issues that have been encountered were prompted by somebody complaining somewhere along the way about something, or 
Like, how did... How uh, did uh, there, 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 there was... Yeah, and some of these things are in the court, so I, some things I can't talk about. But, you know, there was uh, uh, a complaint by a physician that brought my workings to the attention of the college. And then when the police when went to the college, you know, you don't, so the police talked to the college, but the, the police had suspicions. I don't know why, because if, if the police had, had, uh, availed themselves of the MMAR regulations, they would realize that, that there was nothing criminal going on, you know. But, right. but the local police have, uh, in, over many, many years, they have a lot of prejudice against me, you know, in particular. Uh, just o- over some things where I maybe called them on, on their activities, you know. And uh, and so, you know, it, it was that prejudice by the local police. And then, of course, the general prejudice against cannabis, you know, which, and those two together, uh, the, the police felt that they they had uh, cause to grab 4,000 charts in my files, you know. Uh, that was going to be one of my next questions, is that um, I have been, I've been led to believe that none of those 4,000 charts have ever been returned to the patients that, or correct. any that's of the correct. physicians? That's correct. They have not been returned, no. Wow. I have heard that some Those people two. when requested uh, when they requested them together. Them back. Is that uh, right? Some people when they requested them, what? I'm sorry. Some people actually went to the the police and said, "I want my records back," and they got them back. That was what I heard. Yeah. You know? That that yeah. the, yes, there's a few that got them back. There was probably more that did not get them back, even though they made the same request. You know. Uh, yeah, they the, they were actually quite rude and. Uh, there's a lot of people that didn't get their charts back, even though they made made a requisition, you know. Well, was, was, can I ask you a, a kind of a candid question? And, and I don't know the answer right now. All I all I know is the story that I've heard. Uh, Something yeah. about uh, you, you being on duty at the ER, at the emergency department, and s- uh, somebody getting into a car accident and being brought in to be looked over uh, by the OPP. Can you talk about that? Uh, that? Sure. I mean, I I was at work. It was in the emergency department in a in the northern town that's uh, underserved. So, you know, there's not many physicians, and uh, I was working in the emergency department when the the police felt that uh, they had to come and arrest me, take me away from my work, and it consequently put the community in danger because they, there's no other doctor available, you know. And uh, they arrested me and took me to Bancroft, which, I mean, all they would have had to do was knock on my door and say, you know, can you come to court tomorrow? But I, for, for some reason, they... What, what did they arrest you for? I'm sorry? Oh, that that, was, that was when they, uh, they uh, read the charges of forgery, fraud, and... Uh, money laundering. What? How do they? Money how, laundering. How, how do they get that from being an emergency room family doctor? Yes. They found it in your dryer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. You know what? I think that that's a good place to take a break. Yeah. Because I, I'd like to explore that a little bit because that's baffling. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to take a quick break and and listen to something from our staff profiteer. And uh, we're also going to listen to some <laughs> Uwe Banton, the roots of the root of it, cannabis song. We'll be right back. This is the 420 Radio Show. If you have a question for Dr. Cameramans and you'd like to ask it, come on into 420 Radio. Oh, sorry, www.420radio.ca, and come on in our chat room. And the guys are in there. They will ask uh, as soon as we get a minute, and we'll be right back. This is Bubbles from the Trailer Park, and they're playing some fucking excellent music on LifestyleRadio.ca. I hope I didn't sound too nervous there.
You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Inspirational, known all over the world, it's international. From the Rasta man down to the cardinal, they use it as a holy sacrament, well spiritual. The only crime about it, it's still illegal. If you know the roots of it, then you would make good use of it. Cause if you know the roots of it, then you will find the truth. Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like wick, ebb and flow, drip, or aeroponic system, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. And they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each... So, just, just quickly... Time to say we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nobody got caught this time. Off air, 
we were talking. I, I mentioned to Rob that uh, since I saw him, uh, I've gotten type 2 diabetes. So he suggested something, and I, I'm writing it down, uh, but I wanted him to repeat it, so we stopped the conversation. So uh, would you mind repeating it? You suggested me trying something. Yeah, I, I suggest that you try uh, Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is part of what we're going to be doing in the in the wellness clinic here is uh, we're going to be talking about alternative ways to deal with health issues and, you know, ho- hopefully things that bring you back into wholeness or a little more centered harmony. Um, and, well, Jerusalem artichokes, they've shown to have activity with type 2 diabetes, particularly type 2 diabetes. Uh, and uh, I suggested that we try them and see what happens over a couple of weeks or a month. You know, I'm going to. One a day, you said. One a day. One day you eat one cooked. The next day you eat one raw. Okay. I'm going to try it. So I was looking them up, and they say that the Jerusalem artichoke's best friends are sage, thyme, butter, bacon. <laughs> uh-huh. There you go. Bacon. bacon. Cream. <laughs> Pork fat cheese. rules anything smoked so yeah if you're gonna cook them up cook them with some bacon that'll be great for your diabetes i will get my mom to get me some i have a jewish mom in the city of toronto who will know how to get them <laughs> oh yeah but she won't be good with bacon oh god yeah we're we're reformed <laughs> oh you're reformed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay yeah yeah you right. can't live you can't be, live in north america and not like my, bacon my if uncle just, is, a, <laughs> is a reformed a rabbi and i've actually sat with him in a steakhouse and had Pork. So yeah, we're reformed. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> so I just pork chops are okay at your wedding. Jerk. Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, I'd, I'd I'd rather a pork roast, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, thank you for that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try that, and and then next time I have you on, then we'll see if it works. Okay. Excellent. So uh, now I, I want to no now I want to expand on on that little tidbit that he just provided. Tell us about this new clinic. Yep. Uh, can, whoever is hissing, can you uh, try and stop? I don't hear any hiss. I, I've been muted. Oh, it might actually be our guest. Oh, is, is my telephone doing something? No, there's just a hiss. Okay, I think I got it stopped here. Okay. I think it's Let's only Albert here. Yeah, it. it's just me. You know, I, I'm going to tell you what. What do you I'm, got for tinnitus? I'm going to sit here and I'm going to puff on my Herva uh, uh, vaporizer. Uh, it's a handheld vaporizer that I'm reviewing and I'm going to be talking about it over the next little while because I love it. And I'm going to let these guys yap with uh, Dr. K for a little while because they know what they're talking about and I just push buttons. <laughs> I'd like to go back to what the new clinic is. Uh, well, uh, since my license has been revoked, I, I can no longer write prescriptions, and I can no longer bill OHIP for when I see patients. So we're going to change the tune a little bit. It's, it's going to be called a wellness clinic. And uh, basically what it's going to do is, is, is focus on, on the healing journey that we're all on, you know. So we talk about wellness, we talk about wholeness, mm-hmm. we talk about harmony. Everything you don't talk about uh, with your doctor. <laughs> that, that's, that's correct. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like w- when you go to medical school, you learn a ton of information. You have all kinds of knowledge about the organ systems. You have knowledge about how the endocrine system affects the organ systems, how the the uh, nervous system affects the endocrine system, and then consequently the organ systems. But we do not talk about what influences the nervous system, which is our emotional state, you know. So it, we're going to be talking more about the emotional state and how that brings on illness or, you know, not even illness, but just out of sync with with, uh, with the universe. So, wow. And it's a lot of cultures in the past have, have approached illness that way. and. They have ceremonies, particularly in the in the native communities. They have ceremonies that are geared to bringing the person back in line and you know in harmony with things and bringing the community in harmony with with, uh, with things. So. And you, you know, and um, 
one of the things I guess you must probably be going to have that most doctors have no knowledge of is nutrition also? Yes, and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be about that as well, about, you know, making healthy choices, not just in eating, but healthy choices right. in, in, in other activities, yes. Well, that leads me to my next question because I'm something else that I'm working on. Um, as a doctor and as somebody who's going to be running a wellness clinic, what are your professional views on therapeutic gardening? Therapeutic, well, that's, that's where it's at, you know. I mean, the relationship with man and, and, uh, and his vegetables or his medicine, I mean, that, that's therapeutic, you know. Not only so, is it therapeutic for you, it's therapeutic for the plant as well, because the plant just wants to give love, and when you're working in the garden, you obviously are part of that loving relationship. Too. So from a doctor's garden. perspective, how can you explain why so many of the doctors and clinics are coming out now saying that they're against therapeutic gardening for patients to grow their own medicine? They're just out of touch, you know. They they haven't gardened. They have to start gardening. Can I ask a question? No, they can grow. They don't have to grow marijuana, but they can grow tomatoes. Could I, can I ask you a question, Rob, uh, on the same sure. subject? Um, and I don't. Uh, I'm just expecting an honest answer. Do you use cannabis in any form? Uh, no, no, not really. Okay. Um, I way back I did. I you know, I tried it. It was fun, but it wasn't really. I did be careful. And I, I didn't have any illness. I didn't need it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but last year, age caught up with me, and I had a little stiff joints and blah, blah, blah. And uh, somebody said, well, you really should try some of this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and she signed for it. I said, well, okay. So I tried a little bit. And yeah, it was, uh, it was like magic. It was great. <laughs> I didn't have any pain for a couple of days. I... So, I... I like Ross uh, suffer, although his is much more intense than mine. I've got the neuro stuff going on here with my feet and my back and everything else. Right, right. And peripheral neuropathy. It's it's just horrible. Thank you. Oh, so right. yeah. um, when I have that first puff in the morning, and I'm a joint smoker because I used to be a cigarette yeah. smoker. Three years clean. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, I can actually feel the stinging stop instantly in my feet. Right, right, right. Can you explain to me why that is? Well, they, I mean, that's the activity of the cannabinoids and, and the cannabidiol. I mean, there's 80 different cannabinoids that are, are working actively when you, when you ingest cannabis, you know. Uh, and like I said, there's, there's other medicinal plants out there that probably have equally amount of active ingredients, you know, and that probably have cannabinoids as well. But uh, they 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 work in concert. It's not like okay, you can't just take THC and it's going to have that effect, or you can't just take CBD. You you need THC, CBD. You need the right uh, kind of concomitant factors. You know the other yeah. seventy eight cannabinoids that that work together with it to give you that effect. You know the entourage effect. Yeah, yeah. If you would, yeah. yeah. Or um, a synergy. Synergy. Uh, that's you know, a good example of it. Yeah. 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 Where yeah I mean, everything it, works the, better the as a whole of, than as an individual. That's correct. Yeah, the combination works much more efficient than than the eighty would do individually. You know. I have to say, from my own experience, the coolest synergistic effect of the cannabinoid was in concert with the opioid in order in order to get off the opioid it yes. was absolutely amazing that the more cannabinoids I took in the less opioids I required and yeah. well, from the time I was given the first 20 milligram oxycontin I needed more needed more needed more like every two weeks when I went back to the doctor yeah. it was like I was in more pain than when I went there the first time right, and right, until right. I got to the maximum dosage and then it was just I was a basket case um, right, right. So right. yeah, I, I have to say from experience that is that it, that was the coolest effect I've ever experienced in with the cannabis personally. Well, that that's where I personally see the biggest benefit 
from cannabis is, for, for, you know, for one, to control pain. So when you think that uh, of all the doctor's visits in, in the country, that probably one out of three is for, for pain, you know, then you can see how many people would really be eligible for medical marijuana. I mean, it's not just hundreds of thousands, it's millions would be eligible, you know. Not everybody exactly. can take advantage of that, but, yeah. you know, I, I would say that there's probably going to be a million, a million people that are going to say, yes, I could use that and I should use that, you know. So, yeah, but we've got over a million people that use it now that won't tell anybody. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, Rob, before <laughs> I before I went out to Coe Hill and saw you, uh, yeah. the conversation that I had it, with my GP at the time, who I had been yeah. seeing almost twenty years, uh, was, uh, wh- "What are your feelings about cannabis? I don't have any. It helps for pain." And he said right. he sent me down to Calm. When I asked him to sign my papers, oh, I'm not doing that because I don't know anything about doses. When, when, when you started doing all of this, obviously you learned enough to know what would help and what ha- wouldn't, right? Well, the, the, the thing is on, on the B form, on the application, yeah. uh, you're, you're asking the patient how much he intends to use and how much That's works right. for him. Yeah. So... The, the more people you see, the more experience you're going to get as to what works for people. You That's know? right. Yeah, yeah. And 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 then when I went when I went back to him after uh, needing to, uh, to resign, um, he was only willing to give me three grams. Right. So right. When, when I saw you, we had a chat, and you gave me twelve grams because that's what your diagnosis, you know, right. was. But then uh, you knew about doses. That's where I'm going. You knew about good doses where my doctor didn't. With with new stuff coming into play now, do you think that doctors are going to be forced into learning about that stuff, or do you think they're just going to go, eh, like they were? Uh, I don't think they're going to uh, avail themselves of the knowledge. You know, they're going to... They're gonna, because... For one thing, you know, look at what happened to me. I don't have a license, you know. And that, that, you know, they may say it's because my charting is bad, and you know, my charting may be bad, but, but that certainly the punishment doesn't fit the crime there, you know. Yeah. So the the reason that I don't have a license is because I signed for cannabis, you know. So there's no other doctor wants to lose his license because he signs for cannabis. So. He's just not going to deal with it. And they went, they went a little bit to the extreme to make sure it was kind of finalized for you. I mean, like five years ago almost, they yeah. did that. And, and you've, yeah. been, you've been kind of, what, what have you been doing since then? I know you've been, you were just on a vacation, and you're, but you're, you're continuing living your life, right? Well, of course. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, you know, the, the college can take away my license. Yeah. They can't take away my sense of humor, or they can't take away my life. Or, you know. Are you? Uh, did you get a lot of flack? Did you, Did you? Are you getting flack from patients, uh, former patients, uh, activists? Do, do you get a lot of bad? You mean uh, uh, cannabis patients? Well, just you know, I mean, like. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that go, Doctor K. Oh yeah, sure. He was all about the money. He he must have made a lot of money. Oh yeah, he saw all those people. Yeah. Well, you know, here here you, you want to kind of put that in perspective. It's like okay, I did that. I I signed for people. So at the office, I I charged a hundred dollars. Uh, there was a doctor in Toronto before me who charged seventy five dollars. And, uh, you know, and I charged 75 originally because, yeah, well, you know, I should do the same as him. And then I think he put his up to 100 and so I put it up to 100 And let's uh, also say that, in, on, that, in Ontario, doctors are allowed to overcharge. Oh, that, oh. yeah. That, that's no, no, totally no. Bad. I would say for, that you're allowed to charge a form fee. Okay, yes, you're allowed to charge for forms, and that, but that's considered that's overcharging, fair. right? No, you are allowed to charge for forms. Okay. And as right. a physician, the choice is yours how much you charge. I That's mean, right, yes. I, I could have charged $500, but I didn't, you know. But there's lots of doctors that 
who have will. have done it for yeah. $500. Oh, I've heard three grand is the highest uh, I've heard. Know, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, when, when you're looking at it from that point of view, no, I did. I charge the least of anybody. You know, now, I, then when I went abroad or I went to, you know, to, to Toronto or Halifax, I think, then uh, I charge $250. But, of course, you know, I've got to take my whole office staff. And That's right. All that stuff. So, That's right. You know, the expenses are higher. And, and, and you know, it's a, it's a benefit for the patient because for somebody to take a day off work, come to Coe Hill, you know, sit in the office, blah, 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 they lose a day's work. Plus, they have to pay the gas to come up here. So maybe it would cost them $500, you know, and I come and see them. It costs them $250 and it saves them money and time, you know, so. But, uh, I, I think it works both ways. We know? made it. We made a little overnight trip over it, so we were quite fine. Right. We, we stayed up in Bancroft two nights. I was fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. but there's people who are too sick. That's right. To yeah, the distance, that's right. You know, and so for that reason, it's that was the main reason we went out. And you know, of course, there's some people that come to the outward bound clinics that were able to. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we we actually brought a few <laughs> patients to you at, at yeah. Uh, yeah, Hamilton. Right. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. But uh, yeah, anyways, I mean, I probably made a lot of money because I worked hard and I saw a lot of people. But yeah. I worked hard and saw a lot of people because they were there. The need was there. You know, uh, I, I you know I, I felt bad re- refusing patients. Patients. You know. So like when we went to the east coast then uh well we were only there three or four days so so you know we've got to make the best of being here because people are going to call when we're closed and they're going to say oh when do i get to see you you know but so we saw a lot of people when we went to to the east coast obviously and yeah that you know sure it sounds like a lot of money but there's a lot of expense and you know i think it was a service to the patients and that's, that's you took staff with you to the clinics also, didn't you? I'm sorry? Did you not also take staff with you that you had to cover your expenses? He took, a, do- he took a doctor's and- office with him, basically. Yeah, but yeah. Seriously, we took, people, yeah. we took the fax machine, we took all the staff, and, you know, we, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah it was a big expense. It's no small endeavor to be able to do that in the first place, you know. So, oh, no, like, no, yeah, no. I commend you for that, by the way. Yeah. There are there were there were some scrupulous people out there that were profiteering off of uh, bringing patients the by the bus by the buff load. <laughs> well, I, I, I know. you know I did find that out after. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, like I said, you know, there's no uh, there's no brokering my services. Yeah. You know, but I found out after that, you know, they would send them in to me, and I would charge them a hundred bucks. But they had charged them thousands of dollars or something. You know. Which you know that's not what it's about. You know that's obviously wrong. And and thank you, for, thank you for saying that, Rob, because I know that that's a question that that's been come up in in many conversations about you and what's gone on over the past little years. Right, right, right. right. So it's nice to hear you say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you know I did say it at the time, but obviously some people weren't listening. You know. Well, you know, uh, it was a shock to a lot of people uh, at a time when we really didn't need that kind of shock because, you know, right. how, ma- how many patients, I know you can't say numbers, but y- there's hundreds of people that you helped. Oh, there's thousands. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, where do they go now? Well, yeah, that's, that's the difficult part for them, you know. And, you know, it's it's difficult for me because you put the effort into it, you get them what they need, and then, you know, they turn around, they can't, they can't access their medicine and they have to suffer, you know, which is, which is ridiculous because it's a medicine that, that doesn't hurt anybody. And it's also ridiculous because, you know, people who are sick have a charter right to that medicine. And... And, and my signature is actually a moot point. It's ridiculous to even ask for a signature because they have a, a, a charter right to access cannabis. They should be able to just go to the cannabis store and buy cannabis. You know, they shouldn't need a signature. You know, it's like, I mean, people come to the doctor's office and 
ask for a Percocet, they get Percocet, or sometimes they don't even ask for it, and the doctor gives them Percocet. You know? so yeah, wouldn't, it's, wouldn't it's, that be cool? Perfect. Wouldn't that be cool if you walked into an emergency room with a broken toe and instead of the a doctor signing you, you know, T3s or perks, yes. they give you a little, you know, a six-month prescription for medical cannabis? Yeah. They don't believe that. Yeah, I don't, don't see that happening. Do that. <laughs> what, what was that, but Ross? I don't Under see that happening, but I think it would be They can do that. They can actually do what you just said. You can now. The doctors can do that in a hospital in their office, they can buy it, they can sell it, they can give it to you, they can administer it, all of the above. Oh, the doctors can do that? I wasn't aware of that. But. No, under the new regulations, yes. Oh. This, this, is, this is a good time for a question from the chat room, if we got a minute. Oh, you go right ahead. I was going to uh, I was gonna suggest it anyway. Um, the question was, have you had a chance to look at the new regulations, and if you have, uh, what do you think of them? I, I haven't had a chance to actually look at them, but uh, just before they came out, I was talking to an attorney, and I said, you know, the new regulations are just going to be a rehash of the old ones. And uh, when I talked to him today, he said, yeah, you were right. The new ones are just basically a duplicate of the old MMAR, you know. But I haven't looked at them, so I don't know to what degree the onus is on the patient, uh, which which it was in the old MMAR. Uh, the doctors don't like giving up that autonomy, right? They don't like it when a patient comes to them and says, I've got arthritis and I use so much cannabis. Yeah. But they like to be able to say, well, let's see what you got first, you know. And so then they determine what you have and then they want you to take anti-inflammatories first, and then if that doesn't work, they want you to take opioids, and if that doesn't work, then they might acquiesce and let yep. you use cannabis. But, Basically, turn yeah. yourself into a junkie, and then you can use pot to cure it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but but a lot then, of the colleges, you know, the physicians have them it, as a policy as well. What was that, what was that Marcel? A lot of the colleges of physicians across the country, that is as part of their policy, that uh, cannabis is basically a last resort medicine. You try all of the other pharmaceuticals first. Yeah, right. They don't want them signing. That's why they've taken like doctors like Dr. Cameron and like uh, Dr. Holland and many others, the ones that people have been able to count on to get their prescriptions because the other doctors seem to be too chicken shit to do something about it. Okay, And they're the ones that are being put out of work. I mean, what, and it's right. ridiculous. Where are we supposed to put in a new program but there's no doctors with the balls to sign. What are yeah. we supposed to do? Yeah. Did they? Right. Did, did right. Health Canada tell you flat like because they basically warned physicians not to sign? Did they not? Uh, no, I don't think Health Canada did that. Okay. I think nope. the CMA or the CMPA, like the 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 people who cover physicians, you know, like oh, the insurance. Okay. okay. And they they said, oh, you know, when you sign these documents tread cautiously, right? But, I mean, I, I looked at what they said, and, well, I mean, there's nothing that... They didn't say not to. No, this, it doesn't, it's like it doesn't say caution, doctors. caution, caution. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you go here, you're going to commit a criminal act. Okay, now, now second, qu second part question to that. Do... Do they do the same things with other drugs that they do with cannabis with regards to physicians? No, of course not. But they should, shouldn't they? Well, if they, they, should, they should, if they're going to do... I mean, opiates are more dangerous than cannabis. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you're going by danger, then there should be more restrictions on acquiring opiates than there is on cannabis. There's no... Yeah, because really right reason. now, right now, if you've ever been charged in the last ten years for any drug offense, you can't grow your own medicines now. I mean, and, right. and, and most right. of the people right. that I know that have that issue, yeah, uh, are in that predicament because they went to a doctor like you, and then they got their stuff pulled because of whatever you went through or they had to renew and they couldn't get another doctor whatever the tale was right, right. The end of the mmar caused yep. a lot of that too. that's right, right. that's part, right but the one thing that people have to know i mean every, i got a lot of people that are freaking out about that charges one 
anybody that's got charges can go in front of a judge and be allowed to grow. They can be granted an injunction. You're not screwed, okay? And not it only takes a day or two to get in front of a judge to ask for the permission. And that's oh, all that's it is, is the judge can grant you an injunction to allow yeah. you to grow. If you can prove to the judge that you're being convicted was a result of an unconstitutional program. Exactly. I mean, that's if you were true. stuck between Bingo. licenses, you will get the right to grow again. Do you know what I mean? It's just the way it goes. Yeah. Remember, we have this new program because the MMAR was found to be unconstitutional. And, and then, then the so was MMPR. the MMPR. And it was found to be unconstitutional even before it started. Well, the MMPR so, okay. is more unconstitutional than the MMAR. The MMAR is really not, not too bad a program as long as all the physicians buy into it, you know. That's right, I yeah. Mean, if, if it's, if it's the, the only thing that inhibits physicians on the MMAR is that they, they put too much responsibility on the patients and doctors don't like that. You know, doctors don't like to be told by patients what's wrong with them and what kind of medicine they want to use. But really, I mean, they really shouldn't even have to do all of that because you have a charter right to to access cannabis, it should be just like uh, chamomile tea or you know any other herb that's out there. Tomatoes. Exactly. I I had a conversation with my father about cannabis because he now he's it's gone past the point where we can do anything but he's got full bloom yeah. Parkinson's and he's bedridden and all that but right. my, my father was a physician he was a psychiatrist yeah at Sunnybrook and I asked him flat out um, when it comes to your doctors and the courts when your doctor says this is what this person can medicate with as far as the courts are con concerned they have to shut the fuck up and let that happen is that about right uh, yes because that, that, uh, yeah i mean there's before. no there's no uh, crime in, in in prescribing a certain medication no. you know right no no not at all so what's the, the, big the court deal, won't then? overrule a doctor because the court's not trained in medicine no they're yeah, i don't law. i don't know where uh like see i i'm not charged with uh, prescribing marijuana i'm charged with forgery fraud uh <laughs> trafficking you know what uh, so what what would, what would the forgery be uh well i i don't quite understand the charge myself but you know That's forgery ridiculous. would be if i if i wrote something that was not true or if i uh, did did something that was not according to the regulations or something like that, right? Right. Uh, that would so to I, me that I, I would be fraud. But if you're they, just filling out the form and everything and signing the, and attesting that everything is true to the to your knowledge. Oh, everything is. Oh, everything is right. Everything is. Uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no crime there. I think. I think where they are trying to put the crime is that they see it's an evil plot to for greed and avarice. You know. In 2016, they're still yeah. pushing this, right? Right, right. And we're about to go legal in Canada. That's that's correct. Yeah. 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 And supposedly well, they, in 2017. Yeah, they're going to yeah. really hate the future, aren't they? Yeah, they really I are. I can't even imagine. Um, I think we're going to take another quick break. We got some killing time. And then, oh, I know I just cut out. And then yep. um, we're going to come back and continue our conversation with Dr. K uh, about the future and the new M, uh, the new uh, ABC, uh, ACMPR, Mr. LMNOKOP. ACMPR. Yeah. We'll At least the cannabis. We'll be right back. I know. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. I think it's time for a change 
Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we're gonna focus on Doctor K. Part of the future part, right? And if there's right. if there's yeah. time, yeah. we're all gonna yeah. hold hands and sing Kumbaya. This is the 420 Radio Show. We are live with Doctor K. Right here on the 420 Radio Show. <laughs> uh, kumbaya. Yeah. Don't tempt me. Um, <laughs> we're gonna continue talking with Rob about uh, uh, a whole bunch of things, including what he has in store for the future. Uh, I've heard the word wellness clinic in there mentioned already. Uh, but first, I wanted to include Rob in a conversation about the ACMPR. Uh, uh, we didn't do any news today specifically because we had Rob here. Um, uh, I, unfortunately, uh, Rick was supposed to be here. Rick Versick was supposed to be here. But you know what? I forgot to call him. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll have him on the show next week if he has the time. His, 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 if he's still talking to you. What's that? If yeah, he'll still talk to you. If he's still talking to me. I'm sorry, buddy. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, let's uh, have our conversation. We all wanted to chat a little bit about what's happened over the last week and the decisions and the comments. We found out uh, oh, it's been, what, three days now? Three days, four days, five days? Yeah, something what, like that. Yeah. The regulations? Yeah, two, yeah, two days. The sky started falling. So it's been two days. Yeah, two. And, and, and what I've seen on Facebook anyways and Twitter uh, is a lot of panicking patients. Uh, so Ross has made some phone calls this week. Uh, Lori's been at the Hill. And Marcel's been talking to patients as well as uh, Chris. And I'm sure that, that Dr. K has been talking with patients, uh, even though he's not a doctor. Dr. K is still a doctor. Well, yeah, he's the doctor he's because... He's not writing prescriptions. That's, okay, so then he's right. still a doctor. Yeah. I retract that comment. That's okay. I, I'm I'm stalking Dr. K now, actually. I'm looking at... Uh, <laughs> on. Uh, I've been stalking Rob for creeping four his years. Facebook profile. <laughs> no, actually, I'm creeping great MDs. Oh, great okay. MDs. And... Uh, it's rare to find a doctor with a, a five-star rating. <laughs> yeah, exactly, eh? But it is nice to see when you finally get one that gets five stars for staff, helpfulness, punctuality, and knowledge. And that would be Dr. K. That would be Dr. K. Wow. Uh, woo where's the little clappy thing? Yeah, yeah where's well, the clappy thing? Because I'm on the other, way, the other screen. I can't do both at the same uh, time. You can't multitask? Um, well, no, no, because one window lays on top of the other window. So. All right. Well, the moment's passed. Yeah, I know. So I'm not going to clap yeah. now. Cheer. Good Woo. job on uh, what, Dr. What, K. What, on what do you What do you stars. think about What do you think about those rating services and and the comments and stuff like that, Rob? Have there been some? I'm sure there's been some pretty hurtful things said. Uh, you mean like on rate MDs? Well, just in general. Uh, on the rate MDs, it's. 
Yeah, it's pretty much been okay. There's one or two that say they don't like me. Well, that's, that's you know, I mean, you're not going to please everybody. Hey, so, I've done that with my know. barber before, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, do, I don't put much... Uh, I, I shouldn't say I don't put much in, but... I appreciate, you know, when people do put that on the rate MDs. Well, that's but, right. But uh, nobody else looks at it and yeah. takes it seriously, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, like I can't say to the callers, look, here, there's 35 good ratings on rate MD. Yeah. Okay, so what, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't care. So you guys want to take away this, this great Canadian com- cannabis conversation? Somebody? Oh, sorry. Marcel? For me? Somebody want to talk about the ACMPR? Uh, well, no. I, I mean, I, I've been rereading and rereading the ACMPR, and every time I read it, I get a little more pissed off because I realize that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. It looks yeah, good too. in the first read, but when you start getting in depth and, and understanding what's being said, it's not really a good deal. Like the no, MMA. What, uh, I, I like haven't the MMA. read it. Can you just kind of uh, give me a little overview of it? Okay, I, I, I just quickly changes that are different from the MMAR to this one, because yeah. essentially that's that's what we needed is is an MMAR. Um, they've reduced the, the number of gardens a designated can grower can grow for. Um, basically, it's back to a one to one ratio the way it was back. Well, back before Hitchy, back when it first started, really. Right. Um, the other one is they've implemented a 150 gram maximum carry limit. Uh-huh. And that means that if I were to go on vacation and go to a different province, I couldn't take yeah. enough medicine with me. Uh-huh. You'd have right? to send it to yourself or something. Right, but that's that's actually illegal as well because you can't oh, okay, just ship okay. cannabis to yourself type yeah. thing. So this is this is another issue with it. The biggest one that they've thrown in is any patients that have been convicted within the last ten years of cannabis offense, whether it's in Canada or another country, um, are not eligible to have a license at all. Yeah, but next oh, year it's going to be legal. So come on. All they could do is. <laughs> purchase or designate somebody else to grow for them. Right, right. So, case in point, we have an individual here in Nova Scotia that was charged um, because he got caught growing after his license with you was revoked. Was that uh, in Cumberland? Yes. Yes, okay. Now, I, I know that case, and I think highly of that judge because he said, you know, you're good to go, right? Yeah. He, he got totally off on that one. Right, exactly. But he had a previous one that he didn't get totally off on, so he's oh, still okay. in the same okay. position again. Yeah, yeah. Right, But, yeah, the judge made the right call on that trial. That was a yeah, long, Yeah, because the judge made, the, you know, he said, you know, you have a charter right to access, and, you know, we're not going to let an argument between Health Canada and Dr. Cameron stop you from accessing your medication. So the judge did yeah. the right thing on that. And, and, and like like the guy had said to the judge at the time, because the judge had said, "Well, weren't you told you were supposed to destroy all all your stuff?" And it was the most beautiful line. The guy said, "Your Honor, I'd have to be smash myself in the face with a hammer, stupid, to destroy all my medicine to then buy it, turn around and buy it from you guys." Yeah, right? exactly. It was right. beautiful. It was an excellent trial. Oh yeah. 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 Good. That's one of the, um, that's, I think that's probably the biggest point of contention that I have with the new program, and um, when I was in Ottawa the other day, the veteran that was with me, there's a, a perfect op- or, or a perfect situation where it's a veteran who has um, inclusion under the MMPR, because he's yeah. a veteran, he has all his medicine paid for already, but would right. prefer to grow. Right. And now, because of this um, stipulation, he had a previous charge due to growing his medicine because he couldn't get signed previously. And so 
like, here we go. I don't know how many tens of thousands of people are going to end up in that situation, actually. Well, that's, and, you know, like, it's ridiculous because, one, everybody has a charter right to grow it, you know, and the other one is that, you know, next year when it's legal, all that, that stuff should theoretically be water under the bridge, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like a lot of singing and dancing to go to when in six or eight months' time they're going to come out with something new anyway, right? Right, right, right. But we don't know what kind of changes they'll make to the medical system because they still have to have two separate systems. Yeah, I'm guessing it, this it, medical it, system's going to be challenged before they get to the legalization yeah, part. They do. I agree. I really, I'm really a do bit of a negative take a look at 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 Portugal and the Netherlands and you know countries where they've totally decriminalized all the narcotics and any any narcotics you know <laughs> as long as you're not selling it then if you use it and if you abuse it then that that's considered a medical issue you know you don't have to go to jail for that right yeah, so. I mean it's it's done wonders in Portugal for their both their crime right. rate and their crime addiction rate. Crime rate down rate. by fifty percent. Yeah, and their addiction rate is dropping all the time. Yeah, the Netherlands also the jails are emptying. There's no nobody in jail. Mm. It only makes sense if you've got somebody that's strung out on crack. The the, the the dumbest thing you could do would be to drag him through the legal system as opposed to give him help, medical attention. Exactly. exactly. He, he needs help. Exactly. He doesn't need to be drugged through the legal system. Stand there in front of a okay. judge and not understand what's even being said to him. Yeah. It's dumb. No, they've taken the right approach and they've proven it works, but they get yeah. z basically they get zero mainstream media because it works. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And, and you know, like <clears throat> the, the statistics are that in Canada and in the U.S. Uh, that um, you know adolescents. About 42 or 45 percent of them use marijuana regularly. Kind of, you know, they use it for they use it for fun. Or some might use it for medicine, but basically they just use it for you know Saturday night kind of thing. Because uh, it's illegal. Well, but when you when you talk about in the Netherlands where it's it's basically legal, only about 24 percent of adolescents use it. You know. So and it's proven in every case. Once it's legal, the consumption goes down. Right. Now, the, because the, the, the Netherlands thing isn't the cherry and uh, the, the the little piece of heaven that everybody likes to remember. It used to be twenty years ago, apparently. Right. 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 Oh, because I mean, kids aren't using it because it's advertised against in the schools. They warn yeah. them against it. It's really heavily prop propagandized. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the word. Yep. Okay, and, yeah. and and as and demonized just like we used to do here. They they even do it worse there. It's it is legal, but they scare the yeah. hell out of everybody for it. Right, right, right. And they have no medical but, program to say you can't grow your own in Holland. And the right, well, that's kind of yeah. clear though. Well, they don't have a medical program that to grow your own, but you can no. go to the court and they can convict you to, and your sentencing is to grow your own. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's that's how it works. It's yeah, really that's, yeah. that's happened three times. Well, yeah. like I, oh yeah, I, I, we had Jack. We had our friend. Uh, we had our friend Jackie on here. I think she's currently being paid eight hundred euros a month to produce her own cannabis because Bedro can isn't able to satisfy her requirements. And that right. was her sentence in court. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. I mean, it's it can be done. I sent <laughs> yeah. you to growing your own cannabis. Yeah. Woohoo! Please pick me, pick me. Uh, so Bedrocan yeah. couldn't sell it to those guys, so they decided to come to Canada and try and sell it to us. So, <laughs> so oh, and they can't. Yeah, now they want to export it from here to Ukraine. I think, isn't it? Germany, yeah. isn't it? Germany, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah, it, they're not going to want it either. <laughs> so where this is usually where we have Chris's news. Was there anything that specific you wanted to bring up, uh, Chris? No, I was just I was just excited to sit here and listen to Dr. K. I mean, I was uh, <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of Dr. K and everything that he's done across the country and all the people that he's been able to help. And I think uh, it's a real shame that what they've done to him. And uh, 
yeah, it's 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 just been great sitting here listening to Doctor K talk and uh, getting uh, answering the questions. One, th one thing Doctor K doesn't realize is how many more people he's affected, other than the ones that he'd signed for. Because yeah, he never signed for me, and you know, he no, was, he never signed for me. But he's affected so many other Canadians because him being brought out in the media and vilified in the media caused a lot of new people to go and start researching. Yes. Yeah, All right. Yes. So they went and they learned the truth for themselves that actually cannabis is a safe alternative. Sort of like the silver lining in that um, smoke and mirrors yeah. thing that they put on, right? Yeah. There's there's always a silver lining in there somewhere. Was what that Global that did that? 16 but, uh, by 9. Yeah. Dr. K, just curious. I mean, when people talk about there's not enough evidence that it works, it, like how is it that doctors can ignore their own medical files to say the person's not taking all these things anymore because they're just taking this? That, doesn't anybody else look at that as medical evidence? Good well, question. there's a few of us, but most of them just choose to ignore it. And, and again, it's probably because of the pressures by the college, you know. If, if but you, when it's that obvious right in their faces, I mean, they, they write this shit down yeah. in their file, right? And it's, right. they see the person doesn't take 15 other drugs, they're only taking pot. Yeah. How does that not register is, holy crap, this stuff must really actually work. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, I mean, I can say that all day long, and there's other physicians that can say that. I mean, there's another doctor, Ira Price, that, that used to sign people, or maybe still does, but, you know, he had to... No, he's actually the in the same situation that you're in right now. Yeah, and, he, and he, he's been suspended for three months, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, it, it, it just any doctor that chooses to make uh, cannabis their you know, their forte, they... They just shut them down just as quick as can, they can. I, can, I ask, can I ask something? Um, is there any chance, do you have any chance of getting your license back in Ontario? Uh, I, I filed an appeal. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, you know, by all rights, I mean, the, the punishment didn't fit the crime. As they, I mean, they, they thought that... Uh, my documentation was bad. I mean, there was no bad outcome to patients. There was no complaints from colleagues. There was no complaints from patients. Well, can I ask another question? Sure. Did any one of the thousands of patients that you prescribed cannabis for die from taking too much? No, no, of course not. <laughs> no. Yeah, okay, that was a good question. Now, I've got a better question that goes back to your licensing. What is to prevent you from going to another province? I was just going to ask oh, that, actually. No, they, 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 I, I can't get licensed elsewhere. No. No? No. Oh, so that precludes you from... Does it affect your licensing in New Mexico? Uh, it, it will, eventually. It just, but they won't do anything until the appeal is, is finished, you know, so... If I win the appeal, right. then I'm fine. You know, if the appeal loses, then. Uh, but the the good thing about the appeal is that now it's going to go to a real court. You know, uh, right. before before the appeal at the college, it's just a, a club. You know, that has has a committee that follows the club's guidelines. You know, so if the club doesn't like marijuana, do you, it doesn't matter what you're there for. You're, you're but do you think that because of what's about to happen, because of what has happened this week, things might change for you as well? No, I don't no. think so. No, because I they're mean, still using the, the the excuse of it being record keeping. The, the, oh, okay. you see, the, the college doesn't want to deal with the marijuana issue. You know, they've, they've sidestepped it. They've put it aside. <laughs> well, you know, they're not going to have but, much of a choice soon, are they? Well, well, you know, they, they if, will if they if keep, they, if they they keep had shutting had down all the me, doctors. If, yeah. if they had let me continue to practice, then eventually I would have dealt with the marijuana cannabis issue at the college because it, it's there to deal with. And it, so it's they, there but they stopped you before that you could do that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 
exactly. But, but so, Dr. So, K, you didn't uh, make cannabis your forte, so to speak. You sign yeah. for one or two people, and then that gets found out, and then everybody else just shows up. You didn't pick it. And that's not the only thing that you were doing. Well, and it, and it wasn't my day job. My day job was working in the emergency that, department. Yeah, exactly. I, so, I mean, and you're not signing anybody something. in the emergency department. Exactly. They came to you. I mean, once they hear that you're somebody that signs, when everybody's looking for the doctor that'll sign, you wind up being the doctor that signs for a lot of people. Yeah, but they, you know, I never saw anybody in the emergency department, or you know, there was no no such thing as as people come to the emergency department asking to be signed for medical marijuana. That that only happened at the clinic, you know. Yeah. Um, I got uh, a, a question, and then we're going to take our last break, and then we're going to come back and talk the future. If okay. That's okay. Um, sure. Would you do it again? Well, I mean, I, I did the right thing. It was a day. There was no question about you know. And well, if you did it again, would you change your record keeping? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, be much better. Yeah. Okay, that's the right answer when they ask you that at the appeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. on that note, we're still chatting with Dr. K, Dr. Robert Cameramans from Cohill. He's a doctor in Ontario, Canada, who has been crucified by the court system in Health Canada. For, and, the and the media for helping thousands of Canadians uh, medicate with cannabis when nobody else would. Or very, I shouldn't say nobody else would. Very few other doctors were. That's uh, right. There's a few that yeah. stepped up. That's but, right. But it was later when I was, uh, you know, uh, being vilified by the press, yeah. that's when there was other doctors who, who stepped in. And, yeah. Yeah. And we're yeah, gonna we're, a lot of other doctors stepped back. Yeah. That, that's true too. Yeah. We'll talk about that and the future for Dr. Rob Cameramans and uh cannabis in general in Canada. This is the four four twenty radio show. And uh, we're gonna listen to some Sensi Rock roll up. We'll be right back in about uh, you know, a few minutes. Right back in about uh How are you doing? Nothing. Why not? Trying to get on this Lifestyle Radio website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, yeah, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Oh, yes, man. Me not care what you say, strictly herb it on me brain Yes, me Yes, me love the cannabis, ya yeah. Me name a sensei rock, ya yeah. Me always have me reason Oh, yes, me roll it Me not care what you say, strictly herb it on me brain Roll up your gun, just play Roll up, roll up, roll up your gun, just play So you can pass me the whistle up Pass me the whistle up I wanna be less cliff If you have the ganja Can't smoke with you and you want to beg everything You got to got something for yourself Smoke ganja hard You got to got the whistle up Oh yes, me roll it me not care what you say, strictly herb it on me brain Roll up your gun, just me Yes, me love me cannabis, ya yeah. Me name a sensei rock, ya yeah. Me always have me reason Roll up your gun, just me Oh, yes, me roll it Me not care what you say, strictly herb it on me brain Roll up your gun, just me Roll up your gun, just me Roll up, roll up, roll up your gun, just me All right You never see me beg you feed no lights out Rolling paper, no ganja Me young things always there In a me backyard, me grow a big Cali tree As soon as she have already me I go smoke her eyes and steady So now the apps come around No, no, no Me have fair eyes in a the morning Me I go pick up from the ground That's my where this came from The sensor I 
He's a profiteer. And we are back. <laughs> Do not talk to Ross because he's a profiteer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just don't oh, talk I to Ross. To <laughs> Do you want... You want <laughs> no hydroponics expert. <laughs> yeah, there you go. BMA hydroponics. There you go. Profiteer. So, we are back from yet another break that was uh, Sensi Rock. I really like Sensi Rock, actually. Um, so, we're talking with Dr. K, and I'm wondering, where do you go from here? Where do I go from here? Yeah. Well, you know, seeing as I don't have a medical license, I can't, uh, I can't bill people through OM. And I can't prescribe medications, et cetera, et cetera. But I've always had a strong interest in herbal medicine and alternative holistic approach. So, I, you know, it's going to become the wellness center. I'll just stay here, and uh, people who can afford it or people who can come and see me, I will do consulting. You know, we can talk about the various modalities of healing. and But, but the majority will... Like, I promote herbal medicine, but that, that doesn't mean we can't talk about other things. You know, I'm pretty well versed in a lot of different healing modalities. So. Will you be so, going out and speaking at events and things like that? Do you see that in your future? Uh, nobody's ever asked me. So really? I, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what I would say. Or, that might you know, change. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that might change. We'll just start advertising that for you now. Yes, yes. See, that was Ross a- and I could probably figure out a way that we could make money off of these speaking engagements, right, Ross? <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking yes. Uh, there are so many ways, uh, so many different angles. Uh, I know Dr. Holland wasn't allowed to speak at anything anymore after he was uh, forcibly retired. Well, yeah, yeah like, like, you know, there must be Dr. Holland gagged on some people. They, Dr. They Holland wasn't license, suspended so. for record keeping. And I mean, that sounds a pretty serious offense from the sounds of it. I mean, they throw you away. Well, that, that, that's why the appeal, you know, because <laughs> the punishment doesn't fit the crime. What is the punishment <laughs> that they're looking at? Well, they revoked my license, so that means that's a, I don't that's have a license. That's punishment. Okay. But, but is there criminal punishment coming? Well, that, 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 you know, the criminal courts are a separate issue. They, I mean, the criminal courts, we haven't even gone, got a trial date yet. Are so, you kidding me? No, no, this has been a long, long oh time. Oh, my. <laughs> it's so nice that we have a speedy justice system. Yeah, well, justice delayed is justice denied, or justice denied is 
potatoes. Yeah, or, can you yeah. not have it's, that thrown out if it takes like too long is, for them to do something? There is new legislation that that would make it uh, qualifiable for to be looked at for tossed out. But you know that that uh, that's something that I can't talk about because you know that's that's in the courts. You know, so. right. Yeah, I don't think that they care. I think that they just they just don't want them running prescriptions anymore, and that's what they got. Yeah, well, I I I, I offered three years or four years ago. I said I I'll, I'll hold off on doing the medical marijuana while you do your investigation, you know. Uh, but then it didn't take long for them to say, "Oh no, you can't write prescriptions for medical marijuana." So. I haven't been doing that. Anyways, I, I refer people to, you know, uh, cannabis-friendly doctors, but, but even there, that runs into trouble, too, because, you know, the college wants so much information from the doctors regarding, you know, who they're prescribing it to and how much they're prescribing, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, doctors don't like to, to have that much oversight into their practice, you know. Do you think that's going to change though with the new system coming into play? Oh, I don't. I don't think so. No. No. The college, uh, you know, they're they're old fashioned. It's going to take a long time for them to be okay with this. And, but there's new doctors I mean, coming into play now, though. I'm sorry. There's new younger doctors coming into play. I have a pretty progressive doctor well, here who's yeah. like yourself, an emergency doctor. That's how yeah. I met her. She yeah. said that she told me that she, because of what was going on and why I was there, she didn't feel I was controlling my diabetes, and she would like wanted to invited me to come and and take her on as a doctor because my doctor was in the city of Toronto. Right. Um, right. And, right. and um, but then. Just last week, she told me that that I've got everything regulated, and right, I, as right, we spoke right. about earlier, I have type two diabetes. So, yeah. I mean, uh, there's got to be a way for somebody like yourself to be able to, to promote this healing process and do the job that you spent so many years educating to do. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, yeah, it is very sad. It's frustrating, of course, you know. So, uh, so, to so with the new business, the health and wellness center that you're building, why don't you right. look at starting to put up a, a, a curriculum to start teaching the new doctors the therapeutic uses of cannabis, and then you can hire doctors on for yourself. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> doctors, because doctors seriously, doctors, really doctors do come, need to learn, doctors and don't really I want mean, to come to Coe Hill, you know, it's, you know where it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why not? It's beautiful. Well, I know it's beautiful. You, you know, know what? what the weekend that I was, or well, the week that I was up there, the two days, I saw uh, probably a half a dozen uh, bald eagles flying around yeah. and a bear right in front of me. So right, why wouldn't right. you want to go up there? Yeah. <laughs> Most of them don't, yeah. But if you put a, if you make the curriculum, then you could even go to them and charge them X amount of money to have you come and speak and and teach them the therapeutic uses. Yeah. Or do a professional yeah. development retreat. Somebody's yeah. got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Well, this uh, is and this is what what really boggles my mind. When I was working back way back when, um, in a pro any professional um, capacity, you were expected to keep up with the times and do professional development, if not that's annually, correct. then on a regular basis. That, that's and correct. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but they do get that. The problem is it's being given by Health Canada. Or pharmaceutical companies. Well, yeah. With that, uh, is well, that yeah. Well, courses you know, you, and you, meetings you where they go to and get the Pharmaceutical companies are... are are angry because they are not able to, you know, totally uh, make cannabis, you know, with the 80 cannabinoids. And they can make THC, they can make CBDs, but they can't make the real real product, you know. So, right. you know, God really, would work. God really played them, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, geez, you know, the, you know, they're, the they're, they're not going to start oh my God. Uh, putting out courses for, you know, marijuana prescription or they're not going to go 
to the physicians' offices and start handing out now, cannabis uh, samples. You know, that, did that. Health Canada ever send out physicians? Have they ever sent out physicians any information about cannabis or offering them courses or information packages or anything? No, no, no. So there, there, there was courses in New York, and, and some of the doctors in Ontario uh, availed themselves of that opportunity. So there were some doctors in uh, St. Catharines, I believe, and they just went across the border to Buffalo and, and attended those courses. And, you know, so like in the U.S., there are those courses available. But Mark, just Mark the, Ware's the, been putting on those courses for a number of years through McGill. Mm. Mark Ware. Because yeah. I took well, those, I don't know I took those courses. Of years. In 2010, he did. Uh, I took yeah. those courses, yeah. started the courses back in Accredited. 2000. The accredited courses were started back in 2008, early 2009, I believe. Yeah. Right. I, I'm not. I don't know if they've run any since 2010, have they? I don't know. Not. Not. I don't think so because I went through. looking for them. I mean, the the course, the all four phases were were pretty basic and generic for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but it it. it did allow for some understanding. The problem, the issue was when it started getting to the fourth four, fourth phase, you could see that it was more trying to combine pharmaceuticals with cannabis. That, that's correct. Uh, then, you know, Mark Ware does do research, but yeah. uh, you know, a lot but, of research right. is funded by pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. So, Bayer is, you know, a, Bayer is a, a major uh, sponsor and funding of, of the yeah. CCIC. So they, so. They, they want something that um, they can make money on. GW Pharmacies have been doing cannabis stuff for years, right? Oh, yeah, yeah but I, out I of England. Yeah, but then yeah. they're not allowed to sell their product in England. They're not. I no, will say no. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely thankful that I encountered Dr. Ware in 2006 before right, right. he did his study like he was just getting ready to do it then because it's been yeah. like ten and a half years since he first sort of do I say recommended? He kind of went um, have you heard that I, I found him on the internet I just couldn't couldn't stand myself any longer and one day when I was waiting to go to the doctor I googled pain clinic Canada and he came up and yeah. when I went to my doctor I said please 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 ask you know send a referral to this guy and yeah. um, the first time I saw him he said he asked me he said have you heard that cannabis can be effective in the treatment of neuropathic pain and I was like huh what? Right, right, right. And um, he kind of said, well, it's illegal, but we have this program here in Canada, and it's illegal, but your doctor can do this, and it's illegal, but there are compassion clubs, and, you know. Oh, that's good, sort that's of good, yeah. I have spoke to him before, and, you know, he, he actually looked mm -hmm. at some of my charts, so, yeah. Yeah, well, he, he uh, must have... You know, I, I'm assuming as as my quote unquote pain specialist, um, I went back a couple of times and it was, I found it helpful that in order to go to the clinic you had to actually talk to a psychologist at the same time that you visited him. So I was right, able to tell right. her like how badly I wanted to kill myself because of the crap I was on and stuff like that. Because I right, think it's right. it's necessary for the doctors to understand just how bad that other stuff really is and how. Right, how right. intensely we we want to get off it, you know? Yeah, well, what, one of my goals w w when I was uh, doing more of the cannabis it was to eventually set up a, a rehab facility here in Coe Hill, you know, where, and mostly for people who are addicted to opiates, where, you know, they could come for 14, 30 days, yeah. they could bring a significant other with them, you know, to help them through the process. But, you know, the objective was to get in during that time to get them off opiates, you know. You, you can use cannabis as an adjunctive therapy, and it's re really beneficial, but you wouldn't have to use it. I mean, the objective was to get them off the opiates. But, and, but we all know that cannabis helps in that respect, you know. So that, that was the plans for here before I... Uh, got shut down obviously and that's what's crazy is when if they arrest kids with cannabis they send them the narcotics anonymous okay right right <laughs> yeah
Sorry, everybody got quiet because Marcel just posted an article that we we've oh, got right. up here. Yeah. yeah, I just posted um, a link that just came out this afternoon about Doctor K. Yeah, amazing. and everybody's reading. So I'll so while they're reading, I'll ask the next question okay. about your health and wellness center. Have you ever thought of turning it into a dispensary? Uh, no, we we jokingly have talked about it. Uh, there, there's still some pretty strong prejudice in in the community here against marijuana, no but way. also really? against myself. You know, so I, I mean, if I opened up a dispensary, they would be there like flies on poop. You know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. probably wouldn't last very long. <laughs> The um oh my, if if there's a lot of the community that are a little upset with you for this getting your license back, are you going to still stay in that community and service them? Yeah, that's why. That's where you know I I <coughs> I came here to serve this community. You know, so yeah, I mean, and you know, people have said in the past, why are you doing that? You know, you know that that's not like a money maker. You know, they assume that doctors uh, have to do it for money, but. I like I like the community and I like helping people here, and, but it, it, you know there's lots of communities that are deserving of a good doctor. I could go somewhere else, but we have a farm here, so you know, we grow tomatoes and potatoes and what have you. We just don't grow cannabis. I I have a question from the chat room. Uh, has living yeah. in Co Hill being aggressive or hurtful at all? The community. Has, has living in Cohill been hurtful? Hurtful or aggressive for the community themselves? Have you issue, Have you experienced any problems living there yourselves or Mary? Or Oh, well, from the police, yes. But not from the community itself? Not the community okay. itself, no. I mean, there's obviously people who, who don't understand, you know, marijuana and stuff like that. But uh, And there's probably people who just don't like me or Mary, yeah. but that's that's going to happen no matter where you are you know what have you been what have you been doing since you stopped practicing um to to live to to continue living your life and and <laughs> well I, I applied for my old age pension but that's going to take quite a while <laughs> and uh and, and my mary has as well applied for the old age pension uh, we uh we did uh, do some home visits. We we might continue doing some of that. Uh, I, I used to work in the cafe. I make breakfast. You know, I might do that. So, <laughs> a number of things. Oh, I, I wash dishes. You're keeping yourself busy. Yeah, yeah. There's no problem with that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and you still have the bed and breakfast, right? No, we don't. You we don't. We actually sold. This uh, the office and and the cafe, but uh, but we still retain the office, like we rent the office. Yep, yep. So so now we're uh, we have a landlord, which is great. Well, I mean, I mean that just goes to show you that you made a lot of money, huh? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah, I, I we just, got Lamborghinis yeah. hidden up. I just had to throw that out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm reading no, this. No, no, actually, you know, my, my, my day job was working in the emergency department. Working in the emergency department allowed us to have the clinic here. You yeah. Know? So now the last years where it's just been the clinic, it's been tough, you know, to, to make ends meet because we've, you know, we have to pay for this, pay for that, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's why we sold here, but we still owe an astronomical amount of money because we've had to pay for lawyers and things, and, and our, our income has been cut by two-thirds, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not been easy. And it's now, obviously, it's going to be more difficult now that I don't have any income from being a physician, you know. Well, but you know what can I say? You know, it was the I don't know if you know the Moody Blues, the musicians of Moody Blues. Yeah, from oh, years ago. yeah, yeah. They used to say, "Face piles of trials with smiles, my friend." And uh, 
If I, I had that right. song, I would pull it up right now and make it our last song, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was a good song. <laughs> yeah, all the yeah, music. That's a lot good. of what a lot of patients face when the, the, the they're raided or whatever. It's 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 not just you know the court. It's it's all the other losses that you can't make up for. It's, it's, right, right, right. Yeah. But they but they, they count on you having to go through. That's why people give up. So tell me, uh, is there, do you have uh, any information up anywhere for your clinic? I don't, no, okay. because it, it's just been so recent. And then our daughter, you know, she graciously said, look, uh, just come out and visit me. So we've been out there visiting our daughter for the last three weeks, and uh, it was really nice to get away. So oh, I we, we just got back last night, so, you know, to actually end up opening the quote-unquote clinic on Monday morning, so really haven't haven't put it out there at all, not even on the, on Facebook or the support page, but, the, you know, there'll be people that'll help us do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if you can yeah, advertise it in any way possible, that's fine. Uh, Congratulations, and, and um, best of luck with that. Yeah. Thank you. And and please please send us some information when you do have it, so then we can help push that a little bit too. Okay, okay, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, give me something—a phone number, an address, or oh yeah, email address. no, yeah, we'll get you that. No problem. Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll get that. All right. Um, is there anything anybody uh, we're we're wrapping up uh, obviously? Uh, is there anything anybody else wanted to ask or bring up or? Even spew. You can spew if you like. <laughs> spew? Spew. Vent? Vent. I just want to thank Dr. K again for everything that he's done and for being here and popping out and talking to us today. You're always so aggressive, Chris. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. It's been, it's been good. Yeah, yeah uh, Rob, sincerely, thank you for everything that you've yeah, done. You're welcome. And, yeah. uh, you know, we'll keep in touch. And when, when things get going, we may even turn up there and say hello. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah. Be uh, good to have a visit. This has been if the... Could, well, go on. I'll go stop ahead. in and show you how to make some real money there. There you go. <laughs> I got a word for you. Cannabis extracts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, topical creams. There's Top. another word. Two words. There's a not, another word that hits c very close to home for. Oh, me. here's another yes. word. Cannabis. <laughs> Suppositories is another <laughs> word that hits very yes. close to me. Suppositories. <laughs> Suppositories mm. and topical creams are probably the best products that I have right now. Too bad. I top our topical creams that the ones that Deb makes work better for my peripheral neuropathy than any of the 24 different pharmaceuticals that were thrown at me by numerous doctors. I have not had more relief from any of that stuff than I get from the to topical cannabis cream. It's okay, it now, it's medicine that works I, and it's safe. Uh, uh, Marcel is sleeping again. There should have been a... No, I'm looking at the chat room because Lori says thank you to Dr. Okay, Kim. thank you. Thank all of you. Yes, it. a lot of people are saying thank you in the chat for uh, to you, and we're going to let you go so you can get on with your day. And again, thank you, Rob. We'll be in touch. Yep, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Take you care. very much. Okay, we'll thank talk you later. Yeah. Bye bye. So that was Rob Cameraman, Doctor K. Doctor K. So what do we think now? What do we think now, people? You heard the truth. You heard the, the facts. Hasn't changed. And you heard the facts, uh, as per the rumor, as, as 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 you know, in a, in, as opposed to the uh, rumors. You heard the facts. Yeah, the facts yeah. from the horse's mouth, not calling him a horse. Yeah, no. Yeah. You, yeah. Heard the <laughs> you heard the compassion there too. I mean, he's got a lot of compassion, and he still exudes that. Yeah, he's. I mean, to the point where he's still opening up I, the health and wellness. I, I tell you, if I had gone through what this man is going through, I'd be a grumpy fucking prick. I'm sorry, well, but are. I would be. What's, what was <laughs> yeah, that, you'd Ross? Be a little bitter. I'd be a little bitter. Just a little bitter. I'm sorry. Just a little bitter. Uh, but, you know, he's continued on his life, and we wish him well, and, and uh, I hope his clinic just takes off. You know? 
Yeah, me too. I think it might. Especially if he starts teaching therapeutic uses of cannabis. And, and franchising. Maybe opens, and maybe opens a dispensary and franchises, yes. Yep, there you go. Yeah. You get the Dr. K brand. Oh, my God. Hey. Oh. Oh. oh God! There's oh, another Marcel. idea. Yeah. Another I I idea. I give away on the station <laughs> again. Doctor K's magic cream. Oh yep. God! Stop it! I got no problem private licensing. <laughs> dibs. I got dibs. I called no, dibs. You no way. It. I got. I called it. dibs. Mine's already uh, got the case. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Next week, what do we got? We got anybody planned that we know of next week? Next week is the second of. September, I believe. Yes, it is. I don't know if we have anybody booked for next week, but the following week we have the THC Legal Group from down in the States. They wanted to come and talk to us about legalities that are going on down there right now. What state are they in? Or do they cover federally? You know what? I honestly, I didn't even think about pulling that up. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's okay. Don't but apologize it, to it, me. It, it, apologize it, to the listeners for you s- not <laughs> You no, shush. We have t- seven minutes left, and I'm going to find it to shut your mouth. <laughs> well, I could just shut my mouth by turning my mic off. Well, you could do that, too. <laughs> no, actually, I'm still not shutting my mouth, but All right. you won't hear uh, it. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Here. It is the THC Legal Group. Out of Cleveland, Ohio. Nice. And the gentleman that we will be speaking to is Abe Cohen, and he is the COO of said legal group. And uh, they hit me up on Twitter, and uh, they want to have uh, a unique discussion about the underlying underlying constitutional claims cannabis activists can reasonably make 14th amendment uh and all that other legal stuff so it's going to be a legal jargon conversation and i know the guys will like that because they like that kind of conversation right yeah but now we have to put our heads around the american legal system and it's slightly different than the canadian legal system but but you know even though as i've been doing this a long time and i tried to make sure that everybody knows that we're trying to get information from around the world here this is a global epidemic as i call it and it's something that's very near to all of our hearts even though all of us are in Canada so saying that if you are somewhere else in the world and you would like to bring some information to us and our listeners from that part of the world let us know we'll we'll figure something out all you need is an internet and a phone or a microphone right and especially if you're from the country of Portugal Colombia Jamaica or Uruguay Oh, and North Korea. I'd or to talk to oh, somebody from there. Yes, and uh, <laughs> Russia. I'm sure Kim Jong Un is just going to call. Right and now. we actually do. I don't want him to call. I'd rather somebody, somebody we, intelligent. Call we me. do have a couple of people that um, have joined us from Australia, who I'm sure would be happy to come back. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, uh, Rick Simpson himself uh, joined us a couple of times from the Czech Republic. So yeah. and then we've had Adrian that joined us from damn near everywhere in the world. Oh God, where where was he last time? I don't remember. No, Norway. Norway. Yeah. So basically, if you have an a, a, a reliable internet connection and you would like to talk to us, let us know. We'll figure it out. How's that? We yeah. want to hear what you have to say about cannabis. But please speak English. Uh, and we don't. Yeah, I was just going to say that. You ha- unfortunately, Korean. we'll have to, you know, keep it English because we're Canadian, eh? Hey. Either can- Canadian, Canadian, or French. <laughs> well, speaking of Canadian, if anybody in Spain wants to call, yes. Este me primero dias. Oh yes, uh, 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 yes uh, the profiteers the had several languages under his belt. There you so go. Well, how how many yes, yes, different yes, currencies? Yes, yes, español, muy poco para un acento inglés. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, now hold on. Here, here we can have a con. If you can write in the chat room right now what Ross just said, what are we going to give the folks today, Ross? From BMA <laughs> we Hydroponics. We will give them 
<laughs> we can give them a $50 gift certificate to BMA Hydroponics. Bingo! <laughs> can you say it again? A fifty-dollar <laughs> gift certificate. No, no, no. Can no, no. Save, oh, no. Save, First of all, I said esta mi primero dias, and then I said se hablo español muy poco para un acento inglés. Now all the Portuguese okay, people the are going to be running. Is that Portuguese, Spanish, what? That's Spanish. Okay. It's Spanish. I got well, the last no. part. Deb, Deb's waving her hand back and forth. You know the e e e thing. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Okay, we're waiting in the chat room. Okay. Nancy said, "Say it again. Say it again. Okay. One more time." First, I said, "Este mi primero dios." Then I said, "Se habla español muy poco para un acento inglés." Do, 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 I, know, do, I know the last half. I don't know the first half. So I'll let Nancy win that $50. I can't say it again. $50. $50 going once. Going once. We have, uh, it's it's 8.57. This, this, this deal goes till 9 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> okay. Is time up? Oh, Lori, Lori understood the English. <laughs> that's extremely important that's right <laughs> Let, let's okay, make this said, fair uh, because this I said it is my first day and then I said I speak a little Spanish with an English accent okay now next time next time accent. next time we do a contest there, and if somebody had come up with the answer they really would have gotten it yes they know, would because sure. you know yeah. Rob Ro Ross Ross not Rob. Ross is really a business a nice, owner. A nice guy. A nice guy, and he likes to give things away. So call him at... B no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> call him and ask for your $50 gift certificate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because hey, I, I li I'd like you my... Give me my $50 gift certificate in Spanish. I might do it. Oh, my God. Hang on. Cause I'll go and figure it out right yeah. now. <laughs> no, using Google Translator. Somebody win a five bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that I've been now that I've been totally distracted, I'm going to tell you what distracted me. Apparently, uh, Harper stepped down as MP of his own riding. Group. Yeah, he gave up his yeah, chair today. Exactly. Yes. Woo -hoo! Okay, where's the damn sound effects, boob? No, oh, it's hold not on. a matter of sound effects because the question is, what job is he going to in the private sector? It's a pretend job. It's what? Like yeah. It's a pretend. Yeah. It's a pretend job. And I, I also I heard that the door did hit him. It's in a the pretend ass job. <laughs> it's a pretend job. Well, it is. Well, he had a pretend job up. before he got there. Why not a pretend job afterwards? <laughs> he did a pretend job while he was there. Exactly. There you go. All right, folks. Oh, yes, he's a great pretend. He also has two of his okay. former most trusted colleagues working for him. W or with him, one is named uh, Baird, I think, and what's the other one? Yeah. He, oh God! McKay? He took some of his employees with it's, him. It's either McKay or or one of the others, but yeah, these these are yeah two people that are working in his foreign relations firm. He's got oh a foreign God. relations. Chill down my spine. This is what he's doing. He's he's going to be consulting other countries on how to access <laughs> the sorry. economy in Canada uh, and I guess he's going to lobby government I don't is know gonna, I, is I he going to is he going to listen to him then? hey Ross yeah is he going to be pushing medical cannabis <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's probably using his fair share <laughs> I would uh, I would hope he is <laughs> he's got a lot of bruises oh, from the last election <laughs> They're all going to get together and open a wellness clinic. I will be playing the disclaimer <laughs> after that LP. comment. They're doing an LP. That's what <laughs> The opinion is expressed Oh, yeah. He control. should be working yeah, with uh -huh. an LP like all those other former politicians yeah. and cops. Oh, well, a lot of them are just shareholders now. I know. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we can't allow... allow legal cannabis on the streets and everybody grows so, and that'll cut into our profits. Can I ask you guys a question, each one of you? Sure. Has has what what was just said, our conversation with Dr. K, um, does that bring out some things that maybe you were wondering and answered questions and was it a good conversation, guys? Oh, oh, I like I love the conversation. 
It was a but, great conversation. Yeah. I got all my questions answered that I might have had. Let, let's mm -hmm. let's invite listeners to to you know put something in the chat room right now or post something on Facebook and and say you know uh, if they like the show, if they'd like yeah. to get them back. Yeah. Uh, you know, sure. uh, I, once he once oh, we're gonna get him back anyway. Once he gets going, once he gets his his wellness clinic going, uh, I might actually just go up there and, and we'll do a little interview and we'll do a little sit down and he can go through what's going on and maybe wellness me. There you go. We can do that live oh, um, because I like some people enjoy going up and seeing bears and hawks and eagles and deer and shit. BC. Well, if we can get a lawyer along, yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah. But we'll we'll give it a shot. Okay. Well, we're um, we're gonna be here anyways, so we'll we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because I think I know a couple of people that that may have just found out that the new regulations really aren't going to be so hot for them that may want to um, yeah. vent. Yep. Yeah. I think yeah. Then then we will. We'll move that one up from the 16th to next week. How's that okay, and I and I want to uh, sincerely apologize. But they shouldn't shouldn't do yeah. to try to rectify it. Yep. And, and hope. I know a lot of people have, have been. Next week to find that out, though, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think and that there. I think there's going to be a lot more that comes to light over the next few days. It's only been two days. But oh, that's a hell of a lot of reading to it. Yeah, I, and Mark. exactly. And oh, and oh, I know, I can tell you that I know about 50 people on my list right now that that's all they've been doing for the last... To read the LP section. Okay, there you go. Fall asleep. It's, it's his, what's, what's it's his number, certificate, Ross? and so it's his rules. <laughs> what's the number, Ross? I'm six, on my third Marcel. time. I'm the on number my is third six. time through. What's the number? <laughs> Three. Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> What's a number? The number is four. <laughs> four! <laughs> and then we'll have, all of us will have a, an opportunity to um, be more familiar with it. You know what I mean? Yep. And we'll address all that. Because I did notice there were things like um, hospitals were talked about and pharmacists were talked about and yep. other things were talked about that and doctors were never included in before. Hospital. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Doctors yeah. selling licensed producer stuff to you in hospitals. Yes. <laughs> Shit. And their office. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. All kinds of new stuff that that that. Yeah. I'm looking so forward I, to the I future. The hospital, I had to be in a lockbox, and the nurse couldn't even pass me the lockbox, and now they can sell it to you. <laughs> yeah, so we can administer it to you and transport it to you and yeah, all that fun stuff. We're going to have a lot of conversation to talk about next week, obviously, because a lot of what's going on now will be mauled over and mauled over and mauled over and mauled over and mauled over, over again until so based on that, whether he finds that it satisfies the charter. Like, yeah, absolutely. Right now, that what's been presented is only a suggestion. Okay, it all has to be approved, and you know. We don't know yet. So. Let's end things with that. What happens next is the last question I want to ask. Um, you know what? I think we're going to end it because uh, that question is not going to get aired on Spreaker, unfortunately, which means it's not going to get recorded. So, Because I just got encoding okay. stopped. Oh, man. They didn't include my... Dun, dun, dun. No, it's gone again. <laughs> oh, God. It's going again. It resumed. Well, that's a question we should save for next week. Mm -hmm. What was the question? Say the question again since we just came back. It was your question. I don't remember yeah. what the question was. Uh, over I'll have to listen Listen to the... Yeah, well, you know, if people would stop sending me really good cannabis... <laughs> you really want well, them to stop? No, I don't. No, I don't. He no. He wants you to stop sending him the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, and on that note, thank you all for listening. The podcast will be up momentarily. Uh, please pass it around if you're still listening. Uh, listen to it again. If you have any questions that we didn't get to uh, that you'd like answers to about the ACMPR, hey, that just flows. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, hit us up on our Facebook, on our Twitter, on our website, wherever you see us, and we'll try and find the answers for you on the next show. 
and mygrow.ca. Oh, thank you, Lori. I forgot about that. I have put up a website called mygrow.ca. You have to go to www.mygrow.ca. And the only thing that's up there is the forms and information about growing at home and taking stuff to your doctors to get signed. And I'm really, really upset personally about what I'm hearing about clinics and not accepting patients to grow their own. So I'm trying to help with that. So we're going to be part of our show next week. As yeah. Well. Okay. And so we're going to, if you, if you're, I don't know what, how extensive we're going to be on there, but I think I'm going to try and put some kind of a, a DG database or a clinic database or something where people know where they can go because it's really disheartening to go someplace with a paper in your hand and a big smile because you can grow your own cannabis in your home now and without too much problems and you sit there and you go hi i'm one of your clients can i do this oh sorry no you can't do that we don't do that here you'll have to go and that's what's happening and on that note i think we'll leave it at that yeah yeah okay that we'll talk about that more next week this is the 420 Radio Show. You can catch us here Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Went to what time in where you are there, buddy? Marcel? 8 o'clock here. 8 o'clock out in Atlantic, right? Yep. Okay. And uh, where Ross four, is in four the... 4 o'clock out in B.C. Yeah, what time do we listen to the show at uh, BMA Hydroponics on Saturdays, Ross? On Saturdays, it, I usually put it on. It, it plays for the full two hours. I'm open seven hours, so... You can go in there, there and have time. coffee and listen to the show and tell Ross how much of a profiteer he is while you're standing in his profiteering shop. And speak Spanish to him and get a $50 Yeah! Gift to get. <laughs> there you go. See? See? That's see? muy bueno. See? We're out of here. Yeah. I, I, can you say thanks for listening and we'll see you later in Spanish? Muchas gracias. Uh, hasta luego. Um, that's about it. <laughs> All right. We got some. <laughs> hasta luego. I figured the best way Good to day, end everybody. the show would be some Bob Marley. Get up, stand up. This is the 420 Radio Show. We're out of here. Get up, stand up. This is the Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Preacher man, don't tell me heaven is on the dear. Mighty God.
God is a living man. You can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. So now we see the light. What you gonna we gonna do? stand up for yeah, our rights. Yeah, so yeah. you better get, get up, stand up in the so morning. Give it up, stand up for your rights. Stand up right now. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Don't I like more than smoking trees They'll make you dance the do si do And teach you how the cheese will grow Smoke a bowl on the 420 Radio Show On Lifestyle Radio So how you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Time to get on the floor.